We now come to the final section in this reading, identification of market structure. Both analysts and regulators are concerned with the degree of market competition. As an analyst, you will be interested in investing in companies which have high pricing power. Generally speaking, concentrated industries, industries where there are a few players, tend to be more profitable. Obviously, there is much more to this, and we will discuss these points when we do equity, but clearly an analyst needs to be concerned about the structure of a market because the structure of the market implies pricing power and so on, which in turn drives profitability. Regulators are also concerned. If in a given industry, one or two firms become too strong, then chances are that prices will be higher than they should be relative to, say, a competitive environment. And maybe the quantity supplied will be less than what would be supplied in a more competitive market. So there will be government regulators or authorities which try to control the lack of competition and the laws which deal with such situations are called antitrust laws or competition laws. As an analyst, you should also be aware that whenever there is a possible merger, antitrust laws might kick in and you should be able to evaluate the impact of those antitrust laws. If two large companies A and B are talking about a merger, you might be able to predict that the government will probably not allow this merger if the merger of these two companies creates an entity that is extremely powerful and will have the ability then to maybe set prices. So how do you evaluate market structure? One approach is to use regression or econometric models for measuring market concentration or market power. Here, we use regression to estimate the elasticity of demand and supply. Simplistically, if we determine that the demand curve is very inelastic, then that would imply that the companies or the firms in this particular industry have a lot of pricing power. They can raise prices and not lose sales or not lose too much on sales. But the problem with econometric models is that the data is not easy to come by. The curriculum says a little more about this, but I don't think you need to get into the details. Just recognize that these approaches exist, but they are very difficult because the data is hard to find. The two approaches that you need to be on top of are the N-firm concentration ratio and the herfindahl hirschman index or HHI. And here we talk about the two measures n-firm concentration ratio and HHI. The n-firm concentration ratio is simply the sum of the market shares of the largest n firms. For example, if we take the five firm concentration ratio in a given industry, then we take the market shares in percentage terms. So for example, if the biggest company in a given industry has a 25% market share, the second has 15% and then 10, 10 and 10%, then the five firm concentration ratio would be 70%. This is fairly simple to use and easy to understand. And that is the major advantage of the N firm concentration ratio. But there are several drawbacks or limitations of the N firm concentration ratio. It is largely unaffected by mergers among the top incumbents. Let's say the sixth firm has a market share of 2%. And let's say that the top two merge. Then what is the N firm concentration ratio? Now the top firm has a market share of 40%. And if you count the top five now, you have 40 
50, 60, 70, 72. So from 70% we go to 72% which is almost the same. However, there is a huge impact now because this firm now has 40% market share. It is a dominant firm and clearly that will have an impact. But the in-firm concentration ratio does not give us a sense for that impact. It does not quantify the market power of the firms involved. It does not consider barriers to entry. It does not consider elasticity of demand. So all these in red represent limitations or drawbacks of the in-firm concentration ratio. The HHI is slightly better, but it still has issues. The HHI is the sum of the squared market shares of N firms in a given market. And this number will range from 0 to 1. For a monopoly, the HHI will be 1 because you have one company with 100% of the market share expressed as a decimal 100% simply is 1. So the HHI here will be 1. If you have a perfectly competitive market, then the market shares will be extremely small. Let's say that you have 100 players and let's say that each player has a 1% market share. So in decimal terms, that would be 0 0.01. When we square this, we'll have 0 0.0001. And if you multiply this by 100, you still have a very small number, which is 0 0.001. So in a perfectly competitive environment, which I just described, and we take the 100 largest companies, you still have a very small HHI. So notice that the numbers will range from 0 to 1. Uh, HHI close to 0 implies that the market is fairly competitive or very competitive. And as we get close to one, that means the market becomes more concentrated or more monopolistic. This is a simple measure again, and it is commonly used by regulators. Not in this reading, but in other readings, especially at level two, you will be given approximate ranges and you will be given what sort of actions a regulator might take depending on the change in HHI. The limitations are shown here. HHI does not consider barriers to entry. It also does not consider elasticity of demand. Now I want you to do example five, which requires you to calculate HHI. And there is also a note in this section that talks about calculating the concentration ratio. It is fairly simple, but I want you to read it nevertheless. Generally, there is a high probability of a question showing up involving HHI or the infirm concentration ratio. You are more likely to see HHI though. We are done with all the market structures. Now I will deviate from my regular summary slide and just talk about the major aspects for our four different market structures. And actually what I want you to do first is think about filling this table, which will be an indicator of how much you have remembered. And then I will walk you through the major aspects for all different types of market structures that we need to be concerned with. Here are the most important factors related to perfect competition. In a market characterized by perfect competition, there are many firms. Each firm is small relative to the overall market. So each firm has no pricing power. In fact, every firm is simply a market price taker. In terms of demand analysis, supply analysis, etc., here is a picture that represents the long run equilibrium. If we have price on the X axis, quantity on the Y axis, the demand curve for every firm is a horizontal line. It is perfectly elastic. The demand curve is same as the price. This is the price which is set by the market. Remember, the market will have a downward sloping demand curve. 
and uh, upward sloping supply curve and this market will determine the equilibrium price that equilibrium price is what is taken by every firm in this market in the long run there will be no economic profits for any firm in this market because we'll have a situation like this the flat demand curve which is the same as price which is the same as marginal revenue and this is also the same as average revenue so all are the same in perfect competition profit maximizing quantity is where marginal cost is equal to marginal revenue so that's this point in the long run we will have a average total cost curve which passes through this point the minimum of average total cost will be this point and notice if this is the quantity then we have no economic profit the price per item given by this line is equal to the cost per item and economic profit is zero in the long run in the short run we might have a situation where there is an economic profit but that will cause the supply curve for the market to increase because more firms will enter the market which will cause the price to decrease and ultimately we will end up at this point here are the major points related to monopolistic competition the major characteristic is product differentiation different firms in the industry will try to differentiate their products through marketing advertising branding and so on firms will face a downward sloping demand curve which is different from perfect competition there will be a downward sloping marginal revenue curve which is steeper than the demand curve profit maximizing quantity as always is established based on marginal revenue equal to marginal cost and then the price will be read off the demand curve in the short run the firms in this industry might earn an economic profit but in the long run our average cost curve will be such that the economic profits will come down to zero in equilibrium we will have a situation where the price based on this sort of market is going to be higher than the price that we would have in a perfectly competitive market and the quantity in this market characterized by monopolistic competition would be less than the quantity that we would have in a perfectly competitive market this is not necessarily a bad thing because consumers get a choice and finally there is no distinct supply schedule associated with this sort of a uh, market structure with an oligopoly the major characteristic is that we have a small number of firms which dominate the market and these firms tend to have some pricing power the demand analysis is difficult because it depends on the strategies that are used there are three broad strategies that we have talked about in this reading the kinked demand curve model and by kinked demand curve we mean that we have a demand curve that looks a little like this a little kink over here the assumption with the kinked demand curve is that if a given firm in this market increases prices the other firms will not follow hence this part of the curve is very elastic the firm that increases prices will lose a lot of demand whereas a decrease in price will be followed by the other firms so the increase in demand will not be as much the issue with the kinked demand curve model is that it explains why prices are stable around this point but it doesn't tell us how to get to that stable price the next model is the corno assumption based model here we say that firms set their strategy assuming that the quantities produced by the other firms will remain constant and finally we have nash equilibrium where every firm makes its decisions by taking into account the decisions of the other firms
and we also assume that every firm will do what is best for itself as opposed to what is best for the overall industry. Also note that with an oligopoly, there is no distinct supply function. And finally, monopoly. Here the major characteristic is that we have a single firm which faces a downward sloping demand curve and then you have a marginal revenue curve which is steeper. The price will be set. The price in a monopolistic market will be the highest compared to the other sorts of markets and the quantity would be the lowest if there is no regulation. If there is regulation, then the price and quantity will depend on the regulator. Two popular strategies are to set price equal to either average cost or marginal cost. If the price is set equal to average cost, then the monopoly will earn a normal profit. If the price is set equal to marginal cost, then the monopoly will have an economic loss and the government will have to subsidize the monopoly. In the context of monopolies, you also need to understand the three categories of price discrimination. This is where the monopolist tries to capture as much of the consumer surplus as possible. Also note that with monopolies, there is no distinct supply function. As always, go over the summary in the curriculum review the learning objectives. There are only a few examples, so you should do those. Do the practice problems. They are very good. And also try to do practice questions from other sources.